Season four of Stranger Things. A lot happened this season and we have a lot to talk about. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, like I said, a lot happened this season in Stranger Things. So before we go any further, just know that there are some slight spoilers ahead. So there's your warning. We see that Elle is being bullied in school. We see that she and Mike are still having a long distance relationship and they are still very much in love with each other. But she apparently has been lying to Mike and not telling him exactly what's been going on. She's making it seem like her life is perfect. Everything's going great. And the girl that's bullying her is actually her best friend. Steve and Robin are still great friends. They're still working together in the video store. It seems like both their love lives are not that great. Steve is dating a lot of women, but he seems to be like unfulfilled. Like these dates are leading to nowhere. And Robin has a crush on a girl who's in the band with her, but... During this time, coming out could be a very dangerous thing, so she's afraid to let this girl know how she feels because she doesn't know how she feels. We see that Hopper is in this Russian prison. Lucas is now very popular and he is on the basketball team, while the rest of his friends are now part of the Hellfire Club and this, team, this group is led by Eddie. He is a super senior who has been there for a few years now. We also learned that Max is no longer with Lucas. She has kind of isolated herself and she doesn't really deal with the group too much. She'll talk to them, but she doesn't open up. She goes to a counselor. The counselor tries to get her to open up as well, but she is definitely dealing with the guilt of what happened in the previous season with Billy. It looks like Joyce is a telemarketer. She does phone calls to sell things. She gets a package from Russia and this lets her know that Hopper is basically still alive. So she and Murray team up and they go to Russia to try and rescue Hopper. Jonathan is kind of a pothead now. He hangs out with this guy named Argyle. And although he and Nancy are still together, but he's afraid to visit her and he kind of makes an excuse saying he has to take care of his brother and Elle. And so he can't come see her during spring break. So this time around, our big bad is Vecna. He is a creature from the upside down. His victims are teens who have these secrets that most people don't know about, but it all starts with Chrissy. She is one of the cheerleaders and she is being tormented by Vecna and she goes to Eddie for help. She wants some drugs to help her deal with the headaches and the nightmares and the hallucinations that she's been having. And Vecna kills her right in front of Eddie. And he flees. And naturally, the police and everyone think Eddie has something to do with it. So he goes into hiding. And so it's up to the Hellfire Club, Dustin leading the way to try and clear, find out where he is and clear his name. Meanwhile, Chrissy's boyfriend, Jason, he becomes this very entitled, very passionate person who wants to find Eddie and stop the evil and the demonic things that's going on in their community and... He believes that the Hellfire Club is a cult and they've been summoning demons and causing all this stuff. And so he's kind of, he's one of the other antagonists in this season. And it definitely shows a contrast between him and Eddie and the other characters like in the Hellfire Club. He's handsome, he's rich, he's captain of the basketball team. He's, he has a sports car. He's dating the most popular girl in school. So when he speaks, people really listen. The first time we meet him is at a pep rally and he's giving this speech and he's rallying the crowd and everyone is hanging on his every word. And this is how he is throughout the entire show. And he gets people to basically do what he wants and follow what he says, even when it's the wrong thing. Meanwhile, Dr. Owens comes back and he talks to Elle and, try and tries to convince her that the only way to stop this big bad that is here is for her to get her powers back. And the only way to get her powers back is to go back into another facility where Dr. Brenner or Papa basically tormented her into giving her her powers. She does agree to do this because she wants to help out her friends back in Hawking. This season definitely deals with a lot of emotions and it deals with depression and guilt. And we see that Max, she, but she finally opens up to what's going on with her. She basically hated Billy. And we know in the previous season, he tortured her, he tormented her because he was being abused himself. And sh they never had that brother-sister relationship. It wasn't until the very end, right before he dies, that he changes 
changes his ways and he actually sacrifices himself to save Max. And she lets us know that she had dreamed of a day where he basically was not alive anymore. And when that day actually came, she was somewhat relieved and she feels guilty for being relieved. So it really dealt with some deep, dark subject matter. And Sadie Sink, I have to say, she was great this season. Everyone was great, of course, but she was really great. Her acting chops were amazing and the emotion she put in was just phenomenal. I do feel that this season is the best season so far. I love how they switch things up because the first three seasons, of course, we dealt with the Mind Flayer and the things going on with that, but they were able to switch it up because I don't think the Mind Flayer is going to come back for a fourth time. So we get this new villain, Vecna, and we learn that he is basically the creator of the Mind Flayer and he's been controlling everything from since day one. I always love when shows put add new storylines, but then they kind of retcon it back to the beginning of, oh, this is why this all happened previously. And they did a great job at tying that all together. I think we had some really great characters added to the season as well. The guy who plays Vecna, Argyle, is pretty funny. But Eddie, I think, is definitely the standout new character. And sorry, spoiler alert, but he does die at the end of this season. And honestly, I really wish he didn't die. I really loved his character. And I actually got a little teary-eyed when he died. He was funny. You cared about him. You could tell he was a really nice guy. People just didn't give him a chance. As, you know, Dustin says in the end, if people got to know him, they would have loved him. It's kind of the same with Billy last season. I didn't like his character, but he did redeem himself in the end, and I wish he didn't die so we got to see him grow as a character during this season. I really wish Eddie didn't die because it would have been great to see him with the whole gang next season trying to defeat the big bad. I also loved all the horror references they put in the season. They There are a lot, and they pay homage to quite a bit of horror films, especially ones from the 80s. I even feel like they kind of had Nancy turn, in, turn into kind of a Sigourney Weaver type character, where she, you know, she, she was taking charge, she had the weapon, she's going headfirst into battle. They, you have Hellraiser in there, one of my favorite horror films. Vecna and his scenes are very reminiscent of Hellraiser and also very reminiscent of Nightmare on Elm Street. And speaking of Nightmare on Elm Street, we had a great cameo from Robert England. He is in here. It was just great seeing him. Like I said, there were definitely references to Nightmare on Elm Street in this season. There wasn't really much I disliked about this season. My biggest thing is honestly is I feel like there was just too much conflict going on. There were definitely multiple plot lines and storylines, which was fine. I feel like every scene, something had to happen. And I don't think you always need that. Like when they go, they go to visit Dustin's girlfriend because they need her help and they need her to use her computer for something and they get there first first of all it was just a journey to get there and then they finally get there and she's like oh well I can't use my computer because because I changed Dustin's grade I got in trouble so my father took my computer so then they had to do come up with a plan to get the computer from her father and I just feel like they didn't always have to have a conflict though they didn't have to be an obstacle every time that could have been just a simple simple storyline. But I do love the fact that the episodes were over an hour each and the season finale was basically a movie. It was two and a half hours. And I feel like when you have short episodes, there were only nine episodes. I, be I feel like anything under 13, especially in a sh on a streaming service, the episodes sh definitely should be longer. I love the Disney Plus shows. But I do feel like, you know, you're only doing six episodes, but they're short. And I feel like just 48, 50 minutes is not enough to tell certain stories and that sometimes it can feel rushed. So I loved that these episodes were like an hour and 15 minutes and then the season finale was basically movie length. I'm going to talk about the ending also. I love the fact that the bad guy basically won. 
and it sets up our season five. And now our heroes have to figure out what to do next. And so I can't wait for season five to see what else they do. Hopefully it won't take that long. I know we had a pandemic, so the seasons... So this season did get pushed back. But even before then, I feel like they always took maybe like a year and a half at least before the next season came out. Now the kids are are not 13 and 14 years old anymore. I think Will, who's the youngest, is 17. And so everyone else is like 19 in their 20s. Some of the older kids are like 28 and 29. So hopefully they don't take too too long because these kids are supposed to be in ninth grade. You can tell that they are holding on to their youth. They're shaving their mustaches and trying to make them a look a lot younger than what they are now because puberty hit hard. But guys, that was my review for Stranger Things. Check it out. It really is a great series. You won't be disappointed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.